Hey everyone, this is Kieran. Today's exercise is looking at the endurance of the back of our shoulder or posterior shoulder. So this area in here. Um, the normative values from the study we're sort of referencing go from roughly like the age of 20 to 30, mixture of males and females. Females are kind of on the younger end. Um, so when you do do this test, and I'm talking about some of the normative stuff, um, consider those reference values. And if you want to look a little bit more at it, definitely go check out the study. Um, so when would this be useful, um, particularly after a shoulder injury? Um, it just gives us something to orientate towards, or if you're an overhead athlete and you need um, some, some confidence or some comfort improvement being in overhead positions, um, then you'll find these tests useful. Uh, if you like this content, please subscribe below uh, and let's get into it. So when I was uh, reading through this study, there were, you know, you always want to start with what the purpose is, right? So I'm going through looking at what they're trying to draw out, what, what, what are they, information are they hoping to gain at the end of this. And one of the things, it was two things, one of them was, is there a time difference between these two different positions in terms of how long someone can last? And is there a gender difference? And then also, um, are the muscles at the back of the shoulder fatiguing at different rates in, in a significant way? Um, the posterior deltoid, so the one which sits here to here, um, it looks to be fatiguing the fastest. That being said, they all seem to fatigue around a similar rate. And the muscles they measured, top of my head, looking at post, there was five of them, I think, posterior deltoid, uh, infraspinatus, and then your three trapezius um, fiber orientations, arguably the same muscle, but upper, middle, and, and lower trap. So everything fatigued similarly which is nice, we can use this test to assess the endurance of all those muscles with you know, one test or two variations of a test. So the um, first test position, uh, I will show you on the plinth back here. What can be a little bit tricky when you're setting up tests is you do need consistency in the setup. Um, and that just means you're gonna be getting reliable results. You know that next time you do it, the results you're getting are actually consistent in that, okay, I worked on this in between testing and I did some exercises and some homework, saw some improvements, and okay, I know that those improvements are because of these interventions. But if you have something where the test setup is varied, then you can't be certain that the results you're getting are consistent. And there's other reliability um, things at play as well. There's things like error, there's things like me testing versus someone else testing, or me testing and me testing again. So lots of things to consider. but in general, you want a nice consistent setup if possible. What was tricky from this study was that when I show you in the setup, you're meant to lift your arm and your arm is meant to be touching an object and you're meant to maintain touching that object for the duration of the test. And if you can't, then we'd say that's a, you stop at that point and we measure your time. They didn't give an indication of how high that object is. In the pictures, it looks fairly um, horizontal or fairly even with, with the plane of the arm. So it doesn't look like the arm is way back here. It looks like it's about just in line. So we're gonna go with that one today. But again, how do you keep that consistent? Um, I find that if you do it on the ground, if you lift your hand away from the ground a little bit and try not to touch the ground and stay away from the ground, then that is your, your barrier, so to speak. So it's a bit of the opposite. With the plinth, I'm doing it just for the setup, so it's easy for you guys to visualize. Um, we're going to go for not dropping below the height of the bed, so I'm going to look visually at it, not as reliable, but we're going to try and um, do that just more so you guys can see. So when we think about the weights, they did some um, calculations based on um, particular torque calculations and then measuring circumference of the, the humerus and, and muscle bulk size. And basically they came out with, as a male, you're trying to choose a weight somewhere between two and two and a half kilos in this population. And then if you're a female, you're looking for somewhere in like 1.3 to 1.56 kilos or something like that. So one and a half is probably fine. And I appreciate that some females are gonna be way stronger than some males and some males are gonna be weaker than some females. And it's, it's, so just take these with a grain of salt, give them a go, see if you can meet the standards, see if they're, they're hard or you know, if you need to work on them. Um, the first test position though is gonna be at that 90 degree position I just showed you. So I'm here and I'm just gonna have a look and make sure that that doesn't drop. And what they found, this is two kilos, was that 
guys typically lasted about 10 seconds longer and they'd get to about 60 seconds with this one. And girls would be about 50 seconds. And you can see, unless you're a regular overhead athlete, you may have difficulty with this stuff. And definitely this is feeling challenging. And I'm at the lower end of the male recommendation. Nice. So it gives you a sense of what the position looks like. You can see that if I'm dropping below, I'd probably hit the ground. So then I'd know to pull up. And if that happens and I can't pull up, I'd stop the test. Look at my time and we'll talk about prescription at the end of the video. The second position is 135 degrees of abduction. Now, talking about reliability of testing, we're not actually gonna set that up um, specifically to that degree, but we call that 90, and we call that 180, 100, you know, in between, what are we looking at? Sort of somewhere in this Y range. So they had an elbow bent as well because the abduction is more about the humerus position, not so much the elbow. Tricky thing is, is, again, they didn't specify. Now, if I bend my elbow, the weight's closer to me, so the lever arm changes. So we're gonna be a little bit flexible here, a little bit of creative freedom. Um, bring your arm up, bring it about halfway. If you bend your elbow a little bit, cool. Just make sure that that's what you do every single time. Um, and like I said, it can be hard to measure this stuff if someone's not doing it for you. Okay, so 90 degree start up to about halfway, at least to what I perceive as halfway, and I'm gonna hold, hold, hold. And then what they found is this position tended to last 10 seconds less than the other position, and you still had that roughly 10 second difference in between genders. Now, I don't know how it looks like to you guys, but this is a reasonably hard thing to do. Whew, all right. So let's say you don't meet those numbers. These numbers haven't necessarily been matched against an injured population. This, the people that they chose for this study had no um, history of shoulder injuries or surgeries, et cetera. They're excluded if, if they did have that stuff. So we do need to consider that an injured shoulder, depending on the injury, may not get back to these numbers. Like what is expected from an injury in terms of the numbers we get back to? That being said, other injuries tend to do quite well over time. For example, in ACL, when you look at the ratio of strength between the quadricep muscles, if you keep working at it and persist, you should see a symmetrical strength over time. So I would say aim for these numbers. If you're not getting there, how do you get there? Based on your testing score, let's say you get 30 seconds on the 90 degree test. Take 50% of that and do three to four sets of it. So so you get um, that time, let's call it uh, 15 seconds, four sets of 15 seconds, add five seconds a week, and over time, retest every sort of four to six weeks, and then you'll find that you get closer and closer. That's generally a prescription for endurance, even though there's other ways you can do it too. Um, hope you guys found this helpful. Uh, I would definitely look through these battery of tests. I think endurance tests get left out a lot. You'll see a theme on my channel, there's a lot of endurance tests. Um, and, you know, we, we need work capacity. We need fundamental work capacity in these areas before we start really pushing um, it powerful dynamic stuff where fatigue is important, but that's a different type of fatigue. Um, there's some overlap, but um, anyway, uh, I'm rambling a bit. Give it a go. Hopefully it works for you guys. Hopefully you found it useful, and hopefully you find it useful in your prescription and getting more comfortable in these overhead positions. If you like this video, then please hit like below. Otherwise, to check out more of our content in the future, you can subscribe to our channel by clicking our logo over here. And to check out our latest video, click up here.